I want to speak about three issues of, for the regulation theory. Um, uh, we, we have a little task force. Um, we work on three topics, uh, as you see. Uh, the first, uh, I will try to, to do the first uh, very quickly. What uh, an historicized uh, economic theory means. Um, the topic is, uh, I think, regulation theory. I don't know if you know a lot about regulation theory. But the first point is that regulation theory is uh, something like an um, in institutionalized uh, uh, history said theory uh, linked with uh, German old uh, uh, institutionalism. The second point, the major point for today, is uh, the meso point. I want to, uh, uh, to stress the point that uh, regulation theory is not only a uh, macro uh, theory, but uh, a meso theory. And my topic today is something like a methodological point uh, about uh, meso-analysis. The third point, uh, I can give you the, the, the PowerPoint. I think uh, I could not uh, uh, speak about the third point. But the third point is a major topic for regulation theory. It's about time, uh, how to, uh, to deal with time, how to take our time uh, in uh, inside a regulation theory. Um, these three topics have been uh, presented during the magnificent uh, Congress, uh, Colloque International Recherche et Régulation, uh, uh, which uh, have been uh, in uh, Paris 7 uh, during June. Um, and uh, all these uh, works have been made by uh, Jean-Pierre Chanteau, Agnès Labrousse, Thomas Lamarck, Chandrine Michel, uh, Martine Ognédu, and Julien Vercueil. All of us are working in the, um, for the regulation review. Uh, I am chief editor of the Revue de la Régulation uh, Regulation Review. Um, well, okay. So, uh, first point. Um, what an historicized economic theory means regulation theory within historical institutionalism. Uh, I will say HI now. Uh, the first point is um, uh, a lot of theories uh, develop within uh, HI have their own characteristics and they are not enough specified. The first point is about uh, HI. Um, there is a lot of criticism about HI, um, something like uh, there are descriptives, uh, just approach uh, descriptives uh, without theory. Neo-institutionalists uh, say that. Um, uh, but uh, the, the main goal of the first, uh, the first section, the first topic, is to specify HI's forms of theories. There are theories, not as uh, mainstream theories, but there are theories, uh, grounded theories. Um, there is not really something like um, affiliation uh, between uh, regulation theories and uh, HI predecessor, but um, if you read uh, the little books of uh, Bernard Chavans uh, about uh, institutionalism, you see uh, a lot of links uh, amongst uh, those uh, institutionalism. Uh, all of these theories uh, are uh, uh, hit by uh, critics uh, uh, from the mainstreams and uh, critics from uh, uh, the other heterodoxies and uh, are, uh, have to fight the same, uh, the same uh, problems or the same uh, difficulties. Um, okay. Uh, I think we could uh, uh, describe uh, very quickly uh, three avatars of uh, historical institutionalism. Uh, the German uh, histori historical school, uh, Schmoller, Engels, Beethoven, uh, Weber, uh, Agnès Labrousse lot, uh, write a lot about uh, the link uh, between uh, German historical school and uh, regulation theories. Um, we could uh, speak about the American all institutionalism. 
the, um, the methodology, the, the um, topics, uh, the, um, uh, the spirits of uh, old, uh, old institutionalism, uh, Veblen, Commons, uh, a lot of about Commons. Uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can read uh, Bruno Terray. Um, uh, there is a lot of similarities uh, between uh, American old institutionalism and uh, regulation theories. And, of course, uh, last uh, but not least, uh, the regulation theories. I think you, you met here Aglietta, Boyer, Lipietz, Coriat, all of them, our father. Um, my, not yours. Um, other, there is other connected approach. My topic is to say there is a, a lot of links among all these heterodoxies. Uh, I have to, to speak uh, a, just a, a bit about uh, economics of convention. Do you have heard about Favreau, maybe? He, he came here, Favreau, Olivier Favreau? No? You, sh you should. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, social, stru social structures of accumulation, balls, guinties, um, and so on. Evolutionary economics, uh, Ostroms with uh, social ecolo ecological systems. Maybe Coriat spoke about Ostrom, I, I guess. <laughs> um, and uh, institutional analysis and development. I could say at each time, you could read the regulation review about Ostrom, about that or that, but uh, I don't have uh, to do ads uh, at every moment. Um, and uh, common characteristics of HI forms, they are situated uh, theories, very important, uh, situated theories, not uh, on the, I don't know where, um, situated theories explaining situated uh, regularities. Situated theories explaining situated regularities. You can see Biodo. Biodo just uh, wrote in French. Um, reality is an evolving process. The researcher have to, has to investigate permanently to theorize it. I think that's a major point. A, and you see the regulation theory is something like a methodology uh, uh, linked to the reality. Ever-changing object, non-conservation principle of life and society. Um, something as say, la voie, la voie, come, come here, I think. Yeah, you see la voie. Uh, yeah. uh, the unknown of the unknowns. Uh, links with uh, with main uh, with Keynes and uh, the uncertainty and possibility to develop theories from an a priori ready-made characterization of reality provided by theoretical speculation alone. See uh, mainstream uh, uh, theories. Uh, theories, I think we can we can say mainstream theories with uh, 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 an S. Um, point one: um, reality is an Okay, pardon. Uh, two following principles, the uh, deductive nomological change is not adequate, as you understood. Uh, primary necessity of observing and exploring object to develop grounded theories. Um, okay. Um, abduction. Uh, in this first section, I will speak speak uh, a bit about abduction and then in the second section I will uh, uh, use uh, abduction to, uh, to stress some point about uh, meso-economics. Uh, uh, abduction enables to introduce new ideas, uh, to explain views, uh, uh, salient and even surprising facts. I think it's very important to, to uh, to speak a bit about surprising facts, because sometimes uh, in economics uh, everything has to be under control. We know everything about everything, but in the reality there is uh, surprising facts uh, about uh, uh, competition, about uh, new technologies, about new struggles, uh, and so on, and so on. Um, uh, Adequacy uh, with a moving world uh, to see what is the reality, the realities. 
So uh, we can have uh, something like a development or uh, uh, enriched abduction uh, with a, a scheme uh, abduction, deduction, induction, not only hypothetical deduction. Uh, proximity with an iterative combining of inference mod, uh, modes according to Schmoller, something like a, a, a dialectical methodology, the fact, the still is it fact, the theory, and so on. Um, uh, we could see that in the with pur with first um, uh, in the second section, I will speak about uh, Martin Oyedu, with a colleague from uh, Reims, uh, in the east of France. Um, utility of the extensive gathering of stilized fact. Um, Boyer, uh, Boyer lot, uh, work a lot about the, the, the process of building stilized, stilized facts, uh, uh, according to, uh, to Ni Nicola Cador. Um, or the census investigation uh, developed by Catherine Laurent. The aim is to detect regularities. We have um, surprising facts, and after our job is to detect regularity and to, uh, to, uh, uh, to stress them. Uh, surprise at their call for theoretical explanation. So we have to build a new te uh, theoretical explanation uh, with uh, the regularities. Uh, second point, uh, in HI, observation relies on abstraction. It is not pure observation, um, as uh, someone uh, could say. Um, I can uh, uh, use smaller. Uh, each useful description requires an other system of concept, is what we call abduction, um, uh, an other system of concept on the knowledge of established and entirely causal form, uh, not just one uh, causes explain one uh, transformation. Each observation isolates a given process within the chaos of phenomena. It always relies on abstraction. So you have to catch the reality and to produce still is it fact, uh, something like a process of uh, abstraction. This response to the commonplace critics to HI as a crude description, no theory. Theory. HI realism is not naive. It assumes that access to reality is mediated by concepts and categories. There is uh, a dialectical uh, relation amongst categories, building categories, and watching to the uh, realities. Uh, so, uh, I will not develop this, that point, but there is a, a determined use of statistics. Uh, uh, HI have been pioneer in the uh, using of statistics. Uh, uh, maybe you know uh, a bit about uh, Mitchell uh, at the NBER. Uh, uh, there is some, uh, there's some uh, situation for the regulation theory for uh, Boyer, Aglietta, uh, uh, Mistral, and so on uh, during the 70s at the Direction de la Prévision uh, uh, in France. Uh, some quite similar uh, uh, position. Series aims at explaining observed uh, statistical regularities while being amenable to statistical critics. Uh, a, a link with the critics of the statistics of the the, the categories um, using statistics, social social construction, and contextualization. Always uh, contextualization. Uh, we could see, see that in the German historical school uh, or institutionalism. Um, one point about the economics of convention. Maybe you 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 were a, a bit about uh, De Rosier and Tevno. Uh, about the uh, social construction of statistical data. Um, each time uh, we have to uh, situate uh, the statistics, the categories, uh, 
there is something like a, a razor edge between statistical fetishism and anti-statistical uh, nihilism. Uh, we have to, to, to build our, our uh, track uh, among that two, uh, uh, two difficulties or two points. Uh, third point, à quelle heure j'ai commencé À 20 Ok, ok, thank you. Ok, uh, ok, thank you. Uh, qualitative, qualitative inquiries are, are fuel of uh, fuel theories. Uh, qualitative inquiry uh, favors the emergence of surprise. Uh, we have to be surprised. You, you have, we have to accept uh, surprise and the testing of theories. Uh, the contextualization of the comprehension of motives and imaginaries. Uh, you can read uh, Bob Jessop uh, uh, and uh, um, Ngai Lai Sum um, about imaginaries, uh, maybe Baudrillard also, um, imaginaries of economic actors, something like a uh, building of uh, the representations. German historical school, uh, again, <laughs> comments uh, about pragmatic inquiry. Uh, Ostrom with the qualitative and quantitative method. Uh, maybe with uh, anthropology, uh, political uh, methodology. Uh, there is uh, uh, also uh, a lot to, 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 to do with uh, post trumpeterian case studies, uh, uh, and so on. And I will see after the sectoral studies uh, in the second section. I think I have to go to speed a, a bit. Um, but there is a, a little problem with uh, those uh, grounded theory of theories, uh, is the risks uh, of um, conceptual entropy. Uh, each research team elaborates its own grounded theory, and there is a fragmentation of the, of the theories. Well, you can say it's a problem or not, because uh, the, the advantage is to have his own uh, uh, conceptual um, uh, framework. Um, there is a lot of problem uh, of uh, translation. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's a very uh, important problem for French uh, heterodoxies uh, during, uh, during the 70s and the 80s. Not now, uh, it's not now... Uh, uh, as important as in the 70s, but it's, a, it, it's one of our problems. Um, okay, there is no institutional Esperanto. Uh, do we wish an Esperanto or not? Uh, I think it could be very weak to have an Esperanto, uh, something like uh, uh, one idea uh, 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 to fit all. Uh, I uh, I think not uh, w one size fits all, you know, um, do not uh, permit heterodoxy and do not permit to understand the uh, realities. Fourth uh, point, diversity ought to be placed at the very core of the economic theory. Uh, notion of population thinking, variation is not a mere accident but a fundamental characteristic of the living world, see also Ostrom, see meso-regulation, and so on. Uh, as say uh, Bruno Terre, uh, in regulation theories, uh, extreme cases uh, are part of the explanatory system, and not outliner. Extreme cases are something to, uh, to deal with uh, surprise. Um, Comparison and typology are the key elements uh, in the uh, theorization process, morphological and combinatory theories, and so on. Theories are general matrix to analyze locali localized orders. Comments and Fabian said, 
as scientific theory is a system of ideas conceived as investigating mental tools. Investigating mental tools. It's, I think it's the point of regulation theory, is to give to research uh, tools to go to see the realities. Um, uh, investigative mental tools, I say, uh, built and modified through experience, experience of researcher with their um, their topics, their fields, uh, and so on. Theory as a matrix, explain our exploratory matrix and knowledge systematizing plus knowledge accumulation matrix. And after I cannot develop on that point, there is a lot. All the, the concept of uh, regulation theory, accumulation regime, regulation modes, institutional forms, uh, and so on. Uh, I need two more hours to, to, to develop that point. Um, another day. Uh, fifth uh, point, uh, times is neither homogeneous nor continuous nor neutral in terms of causation. Shackle, Dupuis, Sapi, and so on. Uh, the points uh, could be uh, described like that. There is something like uh, cumulative causation, retroaction uh, of effect on causes. Causation is sequential, but not univocal. Centrality of the expectation of the notion of futurities. Futurity of futurities in comments uh, is something very important to uh, 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 to take our time, to take the time, to, to get the time inside our uh, conceptual frameworks. Time is framed by irreversibility phenomena uh, of various degrees, very various degrees, sometimes uh, huge irreversibility, sometimes uh, very weak, um, as opposed to the acronic tools of mainstream economics, um, something uh, we can describe with a uh, the path dependency, uh, which have been uh, uh, developed uh, in other topics. Um, genealogical approaches um, to, uh, to build, to rebuild the, the genesis and the function of each sector, topic, object uh, you are working on. Uh, uh, genesis function must be distinguished uh, okay. Uh, uh, in uh, the historicized theory, uh, what about prediction? Um, what about prediction? It's, uh, it's not really, really easy to, to, to say something uh, uh, in few words. Uh, uh, or I refuse Laplacian and Marxist uh, form of determinism. Uh, there is no uh, uh, univocal uh, determinism. There is determination, but not determination. And we have to deal with uh, uh, the one and the other. Uh, as say Webern, there is an unfolding process, irreducible, irreducible to prescience. There is something like a retrodiction. Uh, there is determination, anticipation, and retrodiction. Uh, and the uh, regulation theory a lot, uh, uh, work a lot uh, on the post-factum uh, approach, um, like something like ex-post regulation uh, and not ex-ante regulation. Uh, it's, it's very different uh, point of views. Um, uh, uh, but that's, I've been tempered by, uh, by Robert Boyer uh, himself. Even in researches inspired by the regulation theory, cannot pretend to predict the futures. Uh, real time analysis of the crisis of Fordism, the study of the Great Depression of the 30s, and even more development theory open new perspectives. There is something with the normating point of views but it's not primarily normative or predictive point of views. Uh, defining the viability condition of economic processes, 
on their underlying mechanisms. Say Orléans, uh, you can see uh, Orléans, mm. Lordon. You, you, you heard Lord, uh, Lordon and Orléans here? No? I think not. No. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, on the non viability of the financialized capitalism before uh, uh, 27, uh, about scenarios, about patterns. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, okay. Third point, we have to integrate the observer, the researcher, you and me, and Danny, uh, the observer into the theoretical framework, um, situating the theory and the observer. Two conceptual schemes, the one of the researcher, by which his science is built on those of human beings, his object, we are constructing themselves according to their own purpose. The effect of the researcher and the reality on the category, categories um, and something the uh, retrodiction. Myrdal, exposing the value of the economist to critical scrutiny, I have asked for the necessity in any scientific undertaking of stating clearly and explicitly the value premises which are instrumental. They are needed for establishing relevant facts, not only for drawing policy conclusions. Uh, there is something to, 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 to say about uh, modelization, but uh, I will not de deal with that uh, now. Um, second section. Second section, <laughs> so it's the topic of the, of the day. Um, a regulationist method, method, you see, uh, it's in the, uh, on the title, method of meso-analysis, uh, my my uh, my purpose is how to catch what we can uh, call mesospaces of regulation. Regulation with a uh, uh, comma. Um, our point of view, our topic uh, is situated. Yes, it's situated. I say that in the first section. It's situated. Um, and the point is how regulation theory find responses to the crisis, to the lot of crises. Um, we have a conceptual framework able to explain the expanded macroeconomic reproduction of capitalism. The point, um, the point is about the reproduction. Regulation theory uh, work about how capitalism is able to reproduce uh, itself to reproduce and uh, 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 modify all its uh, structure and uh, uh, institution. Now with these challenges, uh, we need to find responses to the crisis, which are the expression of multiple splits and create opportunity for developing new economic models. Not only splits, not only break or breakdown, but uh, also opportunities. Just quickly, uh, we can stress three points very quickly, too quickly. Uh, economical, social, and ec ecological. Economical crisis, one of, uh, one of the points uh, uh, which is very important uh, to me um, is the emergence of a new main economic center and new hierarchies. Uh, the impact of financial criteria on economic decisions, the discrepancy between the winning of the sunrise, uh, as say Bob Jessop, um, the sunrise sectors and the sectors of the old economy, uh, something like uh, sunset se sectors. So it's not only a break between uh, that uh, uh, to do uh, categories of sectors, but transformation, uh, manipulation, um, competency, etc., and so on. Uh, second point, the social crisis, uh, the gap, gap uh, in payment, 
and differentiation um, of the status inside inside a company and outside company between employees between employee and manager between employee and shareholders and something like the end of the wage standard is the crisis of the uh, wage labor nexus the crisis a lot of different crises of wage labor nexus uh, at different scale at national scales uh, and so on on the third uh, set of crises uh, are the, the ecological crises, the uh, inadequacy of growth models, uh, the need and the emergence of uh, new, new green sectors, uh, the category of green sectors as you know, is a, a weak uh, category uh, under, uh, uh, under qualified uh, category. Um, the disqualification of energy intensive, natural resource intensive, and polluting sectors, and the need of new mode of evaluation, uh, as you know, uh, uh, maybe Lipiet spoke about that point, uh, uh, I presume. Conclusion? Yeah. <laughs> he could. He could. Um, and uh, the point: a lot of crises of topics. First, uh, first slide of the second section. Uh, the first point is: we have to understand the process of social differentiation. Social differentiation is something. Uh, to deal with fragmentation, with new categories, uh, with new regularities. Uh, you see my purpose about uh, meso-analysis. There is social differentiation, uh, but at which space? Uh, we need to characterize different kinds of capitalism uh, beyond the historical uh, capitalism, uh, Fordism, uh, financialism, financialized regime um, on different kinds of capitalism beyond national aspect. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I think you know everything about uh, Soski and all, uh, Bruno Amable, and so on. Bruno Amable? No? No. Maybe. Uh, you could, uh, you have to, to deal with another uh, <laughs> year <laughs> in master to see Bruno Amable. <laughs> OK. Uh, so. Different kinds of differentiation, not only national uh, scale, not only uh, historical scale, but um, meso scale, a lot of different scales. Um, our study or our topic, our uh, uh, methodological uh, uh, point is focused on uh, what we call mesoeconomic regulations. <laughs> Uh, and the mesoeconomic regulation uh, try to reflect uh, have the, uh, the ambition to reflect the existence of variety of regulation. Variety of regulation inside uh, an economic regime, inside a dominant economic regime inside the financialized regime, uh, inside the forism, uh, and so on. Um, and reflecting the existence of variety of regulation spaces uh, and the variety of institutional arrangement. Not one macro point of view with three, four, or five building blocks, but a variety of um, space. Um, the need to get out of the macro meso determinism um, and to uh, to label uh, different uh, different uh, situation, uh, not only one determinism, which uh, could be described like that. There is a macro regime like the forism, and the uh, different sectors are built by the macro determination. 
it's critiques uh, that we can uh, address to uh, some uh, uh, Marxist point of view. At, side, at some times, there is a macro determination by the, mode, the, the mode, uh, capitalist mode of production. Um, capitalist mode of production, and there is strong determinism. That's I have to deal with the uh, discussion I, I had with uh, uh, Mavrou Deas. Uh, I think you, you can uh, read about uh, that in the regulation re re review. Uh, so uh, the need to get out um, the macro meso determinism. And a lot of situation, the dominance of uh, regulation space on other regulation. We have to describe the process of domination by a meso regulation on other meso regulation. It has not been described as I uh, wrote it here uh, in the regulation theory. But if you read something about Fordism, we are, we, you have a meso regulation at the level of the uh, automotive sector, and there is domination of that sector on the other. Not a total domination, not a total determinism, but a domination. And we can develop, as, say, as uh, Sabine Montaigne or uh, Horacio Ortiz uh, uh, stress, uh, the domination of the finance sector on the other sector. A lot of uh, colleagues work on, on that uh, major topic, but uh, saying that there, there are meso regulation, specific meso regulation at the, uh, the scale of the sector, and how that uh, institution uh, uh, ex exerts uh, domination on the other uh, spaces uh, is a major topic. But in the same time, we can see, we can describe the autonomy of some meso-regulation spaces, not total autonomy, not uh, something like autarcy. autarcy? No. autarcy. Okay. Um, the autonomy of some meso-regulation spaces, uh -huh. spaces of collective strategies to accommodate and to influence uh, policy decisions, space of elaboration of specific institutional arrangements, and how that specific um, institutional arrangement deal with uh, the macro regime. And I think the third point is uh, very important too, uh, space of social compromise. How social compromise are built, uh, which are uh, the, um, the actors, uh, which are the struggles, um, sometimes uh, 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 very difficult, as you know. Uh, third point, the relation between multiple decisions, which are, as we say in the first section, sequential, circular, uh, recursive decision. Cause effect, cause loop, uh, which kind of loop, macro loop, meso loop. Could we speak about meso loop? What are the, the specific uh, definition of meso loop? Um, regulation is of is in, in the sense is in the sense uh, of dialectical nexus between meso and macro spaces, not determinism but dialectical nexus. So uh, it uh, it is a methodological implication uh, for or of or of. Uh, mesoeconomic approach. Historically, uh, we can say a few words about the emergence of the meso, the meso issue. Um, in international institution, um, uh, World Bank, uh, and so on, um, some international organization had found that instant Incentive system at macro or micro levels reveal malfunction. Uh, if you read uh, Zeza and Lambi, it's nearly mainstream, but they say uh, there are 
there are problems uh, uh, with that uh, incentive system. Um, and we need, uh, we need some meso analysis. We need some sectorial analysis. We need to accept the process of differentiation. Oui, oui, non, mais, OK, standard du point de vue du, OK, je vais répondre après. Uh, C'est pas grave. Uh, the evolutionary literature was, in short, of innovative framework through meso approach. Uh, as Elsner, El in, the, in the, his book, or their book, uh, uh, the uh, chapter, uh, the size, dimension of complex economy toward the mesoeconomics, uh, in the book, the microeconomics of complex economies. And the major roots, uh, we found the major roots uh, in the French Industrial Economic School, uh, the, the Traité d'économie industrielle. I, don't, I think it's not, the, it, it has not been uh, translated. Um, the French Industrial Economic School, before uh, the new Industrial Economic School, based on the uh, incentive uh, concept. Uh, this, uh, this school uh, developed a meso approach. Um, uh, Richard Arena, Richard de Bant, uh, and so on, um, with the concept of um, sous système pertinent, um, relevant subsystem, which is a space of various aspect convergence of economic dynamic. The uh, meso systems are heterogeneous and subject to behavioral and resulting differentiation. We have the same topic about the process of differentiation inside crisis or inside growth. This slide is about, this slide is about the emergence of major issue uh, I, I, I could develop. And this one is about the origin of regulationist meso approach. There, is, uh, there has been a, a debate uh, in the 80s about the functionality concept. Uh, the functionality concept, we have been uh, very uh, useful for, uh, the for during the first time of uh, regulation theory. Um, Hugues, Bertrand, Hugues Bertrand used uh, the concept of functionality, especially at the sectorial uh, level. Um, there is a, a dispute about the mechanism, uh, the mechanic dimension of sectorial spaces in the Marxist uh, interpretation of the functionality. The sector one, the sector two, the determination of the sector two by the sector one. Um, okay. Uh, so there, is a, there are a lot of critic, uh, critics about uh, that uh, uh, very um, uh, strict uh, functionality. And uh, after, in the in the 90s, uh, uh, we could see and read a lot of uh, sector-based analysis uh, about building on public works, about petrochemical sectors, uh, Christian Duterte, who will work uh, here, uh, about the wine sector in France, the major sectorial uh, analysis is about wine, I don't know why. Um, wine sector, uh, Bartoli et Boulet, um, uh, and so on. Uh, question on the functionalism dimension of the sectors. So a new concept emerged, the concept of semi, uh, semi-functionality concept. Semi-functionality concept um, to characterize, to characterize, uh, sorry, uh, the variety of dynamics of sector linked to their own history. Uh, the comment of uh, Robert Boyer about the thesis of Bartoli uh, et Boulet, and Boulet uh, has been the a major moment uh, to uh, develop the, the concept of um, uh, semi-functionality. Semi-functionality, there is something like a determination but, no, but a, a dialectical relation, um, a dialectical relation. The sector can, in return, affect the macroeconomic dynamics, which depends on the cumulative regime 
or um, system. So the macro determine, semi-determine the sector, and the sector is able to uh, determine, to transform uh, the macro regime. So there is dialectical relations between the functional dimension of the sector and the macro spaces, and it holds dynamic in the mesospace. Sectorial evolution are causal in the structural instability of the accumulation regime, and we have to understand uh, at each, ta each time and for each sector uh, what are uh, those uh, functional uh, dimensions. The regulationist meso approach proposed to build a dialectical and history, historical analysis to understand the relation between macro and mesospaces. Um, and you, you can see a paper on historical and national differentiation, as I say uh, before, uh, all Soskis and Amable, uh, with, a, as you know, the variety of capitalism. But you, have, you, you can uh, uh, have a look to the, uh, the discussion with uh, Jessop and Sum about the uh, variegation concept. Uh, they use this concept about China. Um, I think it's very, um, very useful. Um, so that theory or that methodology uh, develop an abductive process or an abductive method, method or a methodology. The territorial and sectoral regulations approach develop an abductive process to build the subject of the analysis. Um, I think that point is very important when you work about a sector, a profession, uh, territory, uh, and so on. You have to build the topic um, and the subject, and the topic do not exist uh, itself. It it's uh, the sense given by uh, Dewey uh, in the pragmatic approach. So innovation is produced endogenously by the way of art of historical processes. Uh, building stilized facts is the core task of the researcher, the major task, the most difficult task, but uh, major. The elaboration of what he studies to, uh, to understand, to, uh, to define what he studies is the system, is regularity, is crisis, uh, uh, which are the frontier. Um, it's the elaboration of what he studies in the same time, a method and the result. So we are permanent uh, um, uh, deplacement on method and result of the research process. So the first time of a thesis uh, is uh, to, to build the method to, uh, to draw the, the line to go to the result and, uh, and so on. Okay. Okay. Ten. Okay. The elaboration of what is uh, <laughs> this is not possible to determine a priori uh, the frame and the scope of the uh, relevant subsystem on the running meso regulations. The most important slide: uh, meso regulation on various levels, um, territory, sector, value chain, profession. But I could add another list. We have to uh, open our mind uh, about the, uh, the space of meso regulation. They are not the same. We could not say the same thing about uh, each of them, but we have we we could use uh, regulation methodology on uh, each of this uh, level or each of this uh, space. The first of them is uh, territory, space, spaces where uh, identity are built, 
and from which collective development dynamics are undertaken. Space, space where structural form uh, inherited from the past are articulated with the action of situated player um, who anticipate the future in the, in the resolution of productive issues. Inherited from the past, the history, articulated with action situated, situated historically, locally, uh, institutionally, um, and anticipation for resolution of productive uh, issues. I think it's, uh, we have, we have all, the, all the elements to understand the, the process of transformation of space or the sector or meso regulation. Uh, one of the major uh, uh, research is the uh, research about the third Italy. I don't know if uh, analysts talked about that uh, yesterday. No? He, he, uh, he, he have edited two uh, big books about uh, third Italy clusters and um, proximity. Um, uh, something like uh, local regulations. Uh, um, I don't know if, if they are in English, but uh, in French it's uh, les régions qui gagnent, uh, winning uh, regions. Um, from the third Italy, um, process of differentiation uh, at the local uh, scale and uh, process of uh, competition, cooperation, it's a very specific institution, uh, very interesting uh, uh, research. And we can speak about the variety in Asia, uh, variety in China, variety in uh, Latin America, the regulation at the national space or regional uh, uh, scale, sorry, uh, regional scale or national scale. Uh, there are uh, different uh, issues of regulation review in Latin, about Latin America, about Asia, and uh, a new uh, in uh, 1917. 17, sorry, 17, uh, about China, I hope so. Okay, um, territories. There is something about terri territories, uh, about uh, services to individuals. Uh, uh, a colleague, uh, Florence Gallois, work about the service, the service to individuals, and uh, her topic was to, uh, to describe the sectoral uh, regulation, and in working, in an abduction methodology, uh, she uh, described a uh, territorial regulation. The regulation has not been built by the sector's institution, but by the territorialized actors. Uh, service to individuals, the meso regulation is provided by the territory, not by the expected sectors. Um, we can, uh, we can develop about uh, urban differentiation, topic about, um, topic, uh, it could be the last uh, slide, uh, about urban differentiation, uh, about metropolization uh, in China or uh, elsewhere, uh, about uh, urban nature, um, and so on. Territor territorial differentiation are m major topics. But there is also sectorial differentiation, as you understand, um, stabilized forms of consistent relation, it could be a short uh, definition, um, outcome of a process of institutionalization of relation of competition and of cooperation, codified consistency on the basis of proper identical rules, something with the identity, with the cooperation, with the competition, with the process of institutionalization. There is a lot of, uh, of uh, research, I, uh, as I say, on the wine, on the... Um, I, I work uh, in, during my thesis uh, well, in as on, uh, well, years ago uh, about the, the desectorization of telecommunication, uh, uh, there is uh, works about the development of the e-economics as a sector which uh, develop 
uh, their own institutions. Uh, Martin Onyedu and some other works on the emergence of the green sector, on chemistry, the green chemistry, uh, transformation, of the, transformation of the energy sectors. Uh, Robert Boyer work about the anthropogenetic sectors. Um, anthropogenetic is uh, health and uh, education. Okay, sectors. But we, we can uh, develop other uh, mesoscales uh, or mesospace uh, uh, value chain, uh, global value chain. Maybe Corinne Vercher uh, spoke about va global value chain, no? Not yet? I, I think she, she will, she will, I, I'm sure. Uh, value, on Cédric Durand, of course. Uh, value chain, specific form of organization and of competition between firms uh, that are formally independent but uh, economically dependent. Uh, new uh, form of domination inside uh, industrial relations. Uh, something like a, a key player um, situated downstream or upstream, a uh, different situation uh, could, uh, uh, could happen. Uh, uh, downstream or upstream the, the chain uh, with the preponderant power, uh, buyer dominated, producer dominated. I, I work uh, in the spirit of uh, Corinne Vercher uh, about uh, the CSR uh, development uh, uh, as uh, element of meso regulation inside the global value chain. Uh, and Florence Palpaquer with uh, Corinne Vercher, and the, the key role of meso devices to build the relations uh, inside valuation, something with a relation of power inside the global valuation. <laughs> but also, and I think it's something uh, a bit new, uh, maybe for you, uh, uh, profession or uh, professional group uh, could be elements part of um, meso-regulation. Uh, uh, Jérémy Bastien is a young uh, doctorant, doctorant uh, PhD student, uh, working, uh, we uh, work about uh, professional football as meso-regulation, um, but also medicine, education, where there is strong uh, professional power, uh, have to be uh, understood as an uh, element uh, of uh, meso-regulation. The nature of compromise and bargaining, uh, bargaining the rules uh, which are uh, negotiated uh, are at the meso-level. Two minutes, five minutes, three minutes, one minute? Two minutes. Okay. Uh, no, pas très grave. <laughs> okay, uh, just some points to, uh, to discuss. Um, on the necessity of defining each situation, what is regulated, how the regulation works or operates, in which economic or social space the regulation takes place. It's a uh, uh, tool spirit. Uh, the regulation could be, in the same time, or not. The reproduction of the instituted nexus among players, the major tools of uh, regulation theory, are about reproduction. But uh, there are some breaks, some crises, some impossibility of reproduction, and we have to deal, in the same time, with the reproduction and with the uh, the breaks, crisis, impossibility of regulation. Um, so we have to assume the existence of social compromise. Such coordination creates social compromise and assume the existence of social compromise, a process of permanent transformation. And uh, there is a, a permanent transformation. There are intentionality, but the intentionality do not produce the reality, but we cannot do without the intentionality. Um, okay, I will conclude. Um, so, 
conclusion one, just two, two minutes, maybe three. Uh, the meso-level and the unfinished regulation with no determinism relation, relation to the macro level. I give you a definition of uh, the mode of regulation I think it's necessary. Questioning against the issue of mode of regulation in order to extend it. You know my purpose is how to deal with the uh, concept of mode of regulation with the macro concept uh, which could be useful at the meso level but evidently it's not the same uh, uses and the same definition. Mode of regulation set of procedure of individual and collective behaviors and read yourself <laughs> this is better than my poor english accent okay uh, so we have to uh, understand and to question partial and local regulation that are inserted into macro relation um, and to conclude uh, Regulation which are not so intermediary. I think saying that meso level is just intermediary is quite a misunderstanding, which are not so intermediary between macro uh, level and the player, uh, than other sort or the kind uh, of regulation. Regulations are, are not another level, but another operating modes, plurality of loop or looping, understanding the dominant regulation, checking how the macro device are binding, but not deterministic. And that's really the last. Um, yes, ah, there is a third part that uh, I will not uh, say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the middle level and epistemological posture, posture of the research and the research method. Triple meaning of meso concept: the meso concept scales, the meso economic intermediary devices, devices, device as rule, mode of coordination, relation between formal and informal rules, and therefore the nature of meso regulations that move beyond the contradiction and produce temporary compromise. Sometimes strong for workers in the foreign, in the foreign, sometimes very weak for the uh, for the researcher, like the in the uh, Uber case. Uh, excellent and to distinguish excente regulation, excente regulation is the regulation uh, in the intentionality of uh, actors and ex post regulation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor, for a very interesting presentation. So our part will be on your second part, so about the regulationist method of MESA analysis. And your presentation was so comprehensive that uh, you already answered part of our critics and questions. And so at some point we may repeat you. And Alexis will start with um, the general introduction on the regulationist theories. Okay, thank you. So thank you, Professor, again. And here again, uh, most of what we are something uh, saying, you already said it. So just for a um, kind of just a brief introduction about the regulation theory. So the regulation theory is a French school of heterodox economics emerging in the mid 70s. So with the Marxist and Keynesian influences, and as I said, rooted in social sciences approaches, mostly macro focused. So about the Marxist influences, um, I would say it's mostly the idea of contradiction, which is um, taken, but uh, we have to say that uh, the regulation theory does not uh, use the labor theory of value, and this is one of the main points of divergence with uh, traditional, more traditional Marxist approaches. So within the social sciences approaches, I think um, Professor Lamarche uh, already showed it quite a lot. Uh, the importance of uh, sociology, of history also. So we talk about a lot of historical, uh, historical institutionalism. I would maybe add uh, the uh, anal uh, tradition of uh, in uh, history in France, who has also quite a strong impact uh, on this uh, tradition, especially with the idea of regularities. We can find uh, already in the anal and the need to uh, to find some regularities and still is the fact. And again, it's mostly macro focused in the origin uh, theory um, when it emerged in the 70s. 
Um, so the key concepts uh, are um, accumulation regime, institutional forms, and regulation mode. So here it's a bit difficult to uh, explain all of this, uh, as Professor Lamarche said. It's uh, um, but uh, the idea is that we have five institutional forms, which are the monetary regimes, the wage relations, form of competition, international insertion, and form of the state. And uh, those institutional forms um, allow um, the, accumulation, the accumulation regime to uh, continue and to uh, persevere, and allow uh, it to overcome its uh, own contradiction. Uh, and this altogether form a regulation mode, uh, which is uh, the key uh, concept. So, as uh, Professor Lamarche uh, reminded us, there is a variety of capitalism and variety of different uh, differences with different of accumulation regime, different institutional forms, different monetary regime, wage relations we can find across time, across uh, historical uh, periods. And uh, I quote to Fordism. Fordism is a concept in uh, in uh, regulation theory. So it's the um, regulation mode in the post-World War II era, the dominant regulation mode. And uh, I think it's quite important to see that uh, this uh, theory emerged when uh, the Fordism is um, breaking down. And uh, so indeed, the creation of the theory first analyzed something which is disappearing when the creation is emerging. And indeed, the background at the end of Fordism is uh, something important, especially in this meso approach uh, and with uh, some uh, concept coming from that. And now uh, Sophia will talk about uh, this uh, meso uh, specificities. Uh, thank you. Now I will continue with the meso level of analysis. First of all, what is the meso level of, of analysis? Uh, this is the level that can be studied by both econ economists and sociologists and other scientists. And uh, it is situated between the micro and macro level. And um, it captures the institutional aspects of the economy uh, that are not captured by the micro or macroeconomics. It studies um, the interactions between groups and the groups themselves. And uh, at this level, there are spaces where the contradictions of capital accumulation are observed and where resistances are established. Uh, mass level of analysis um, allows us to study the identification of alternative ways and a variety of possible features that an exclusively structural and monocausal analysis doesn't allow to apprehend. Um, for example, the uh, traditional uh, regulation school that uh, study on the macro level, um, they have the mono object, so they can't really capture all these relationships between groups, uh, which can give us some causal explanations of what is really happening. And the meso analysis introduces us this possibility. So it's a wider and more comprehensive tool of uh, research. Also, the meso level of analysis uh, shows us limits of functionalism and doesn't let us fall into the trap of functionalism. Uh, meso modalities are articulated in macro institutional forms retained by the regulation theories. For example, the rhythm of employment creation, the quality of products and others. Uh, it helps us to understand how regulation operates in concrete terms and historically. This can be uh, by mechanisms, institutional compromises, deformation of the production system and others. And we can answer the question in which economic or social space regulation uh, takes shape. Uh, for example, at what collective level and in spaces that should be identified. Um, the pertinent system for research subjects and strategies cannot be given in advance. It constitutes at the same time an abductive hypothesis and a study result. You said a lot about it in your presentation. It means that we don't have um, a strict hypothesis before we actually receive the empirical information. It means that we drive our hypothesis from the empirical information that we uh, receive. And using the conceptual instruments of the regulation theory and getting rid of the original macro-mono subject. So um, we just basically repeated what you have said in your presentation, <laughs> that uh, the mass level of analysis helps us to study the groups, interaction between the groups. We don't have the mono object of the studies. and. Um, we don't have the theories that you're given in advance. It's um, more um, like the union of um, different researchers. So in different uh, countries, in different places, we will have some different hypotheses driven. 
and Alexis will continue more with the uh, semi functionality. Okay, thank you. So um, here I want to speak a bit about the semi functionality. You talk a bit about it, but um, indeed the question is the uh, um, accumulation process and processes and regulation model at the meso level for meso spa space, which is not the dominant sector uh, in uh, the economy. And here we can have kind of two um, approaches, a uh, kind of deterministic view saying that all meso spaces would adopt the same structures as the dominant sector. So meaning we have a dominant macro regime which imposes itself upon all meso spaces without any uh, specificities. And this is empirically false, as reminded by Professor Lamarche. Uh, for instance, the construction sector studied by uh, Christian Duterte or the wine sector, uh, which I forgot the name of the authors. Bartoli and Boulet, sorry, yes. Um, so this um, approach is, uh, is empirically false. Another approach would be to have a really functionalist view of every sector, and it can be also linked to a misunderstanding of what regulation means um, and with this idea of each sector is produced by the functions they ensure at the macroeconomic level of the accumulation regime. So that is to say a sector is organized only in order to, um, to have um, a functional system, a functional macro system. And um, this is also linked with the idea that the regulation is something we can have, um, we can consider as a something which was intentionally, intentionally devised in order to make something coherent and uh, at the macro level, which is absolutely uh, not the case. Uh, it denies autonomy, any autonomy of the sector and of the sector endogenous dynamics. And um, also it doesn't uh, let us to, um, to see, um, I mean, it's, um, it's a negation of the genesis uh, approach uh, putting forward by the regulation school. So we have to uh, take into account specific uh, dynamics inside the fields to uh, really understand what is going on in some fields. Uh, so instead, what you uh, propose is a semi-functionality concept. Uh, that is to say, the sectoral organization is firstly the outcome of internal interest and constraints, but must be compatible with the dominant mode of development and can have a structuring effect on the accumulation regime, which is called functional functionality ex post. So it does not mean the sector as are not functional. They can be functional, they can have some functional aspects and at least they have to be compatible with the dominant regime but they are not devised in order, sexual regu regulation is not devised, meso regulations are devised in order to be co compatible with the uh, dominant regime. The um, constraints at the macro level on the meso spaces um, make them coherent and enforce some coherence but the process is mostly internal under some constraints. And so uh, meso level are the founder process of microdynamic. So it can make them change over time. And this is your example of education, the modification in higher education with the change in the macro uh, dynamic uh, with the uh, emergence of the knowledge economy, which uh, creates um, a, um, a problem of coordination between the education, which is still Fordist with Fordist um, logic and um, an economy which is much uh, more uh, focused on knowledge and on a specific um, ca capital and uh, knowledge. Uh, but they keep their own specificities and temporalities and here again is your paper, there is the, the example of telecommunication where you show clearly that uh, during, uh, before the 70s in the telecommunication sector, we have something, um, we have some aspect of Fordism, of more traditional Fordism in the car industry but uh, we don't have any mass consumption before the 70s and so during the 40s period we don't have the mass consumption which is one of the main feature of the car industry. And uh, the last thing uh, I would say is the dominant regime cannot condition a sector even through even though this would have a functional outcome if the sector dynamics are not compatible. And this is what I think is interesting in your example of the borrow plan and service to person and also the article by uh, Niedu and Galois from uh, 2015, there is this idea that the borrow plan, the service to persons, so the idea was to uh, give more, um, to develop the service to person, uh, especially like uh, one of the, um, the features was to provide check employee service, so by uh, through uh, enterprise and through uh, their work, give uh, people the, um, some uh, 
possibility to uh, pay for a service uh, to person in order to, uh, in a way, the idea could be that we can have that way free people and especially highly um, educated couple from uh, domestic work in order to, um, for them to be uh, more disponible for their work. And we can see that this idea by itself is really functional because it helps in uh, the, um, in the um, perpetuation of the um, of the macro dynamic and on the and it's related to the uh, transformation at the macro level but this was not possible and this was a failure mostly because this uh, this uh, plan did not uh, really take into account local specificities temporalities and uh, especially the territorial uh, aspect of the regulation you were putting forward uh, in your presentation Okay, so now some critics. Thank you. Uh, as I said, it was quite difficult to come up with some critics because in your paper you actually come up with possible critics and answer it, so we didn't have much. And uh, I believe that <laughs> the meso level is a very, very profound and uh, useful tool. So the only two questions we could post as critics is, um, like you already said in your presentation, there is no universal theory, so it can be very time-consuming, very effort-consuming to study each case and elaborate theories based on empirical evidence in each case. And uh, like um, a conclusion from this fact, the second point is, given the importance of this empirical evidence, it may be difficult to conduct a long-term policy elaboration. For politicians, it is very important to have a long term, like 10 years, 20 years, policy plan and concerning that we can't make long-term predictions based on the present empirical evidence, uh, this methodology can only be used for scientists, but it can't be applied to the political sphere. Possibly can't be applied to the political sphere. So we don't have much uh, critics, but we have questions to you. Um, you pointed to uh, the importance of the meta-analysis, which is the uh, study of the groups and interactions between the groups. So should there be a link with behavioral studies as well on the individual level? We, I could uh, clarify with the example of some financial institutions like the brokers who all together as a group make important financial decisions like uh, they determine the exchange rate, the oil prices, and but they can be uh, pressured by some irrational feelings, for example, the fear of losing the income. So should we, at this sense, uh, have some behavioral studies to understand the group uh, motivations and group behavior? And the second one, should the regulation school use the discourse analysis? Because the discourse analysis is the tool that helps us to uh, differentiate uh, the relations between groups in terms of specific discourses or practices and endow them with some meaning. So I think it could be very useful for the regulationists to use this, uh, uh, this method to actually understand the motivation of the groups and what they are doing. Uh, and uh, my last question is, do the objects of regulation exist before they are regulated or are they constituted in and through the act of regulation? I want you to ask answer this question because I couldn't figure out it myself from uh, the articles. So Alexis will continue with his set of questions. Okay, so um, I have a question first about uh, the quotation from your article, but it's also uh, true for your presentation in some ways. So I read, so it's a page two of your paper, there's many kinds of fractioning in the present crisis led us to reconsider the regulation, the regulation theory in a particular way so as to protect, to project an instrument on the present situation, I underline, especially when we wish that this instrument gives a means to have a grip on this reality in terms of political economy. My question, which is a quite important question because, yeah, I, I want to say also, maybe I should have said it before, the, um, Thomas Lamarche is also a member of um, the Regulation Sectorial Territorial Movement inside the regulation uh, theory, which is uh, one of the most important stream today, but it's not all the whole uh, regulation theory, if I may say that. And uh, indeed, uh, this paper on the meso regulation is really derived from this approach. And uh, my question is this one, is, is the meso-analysis approach a way to reactualize the regulation theory according to the present situation, as you said, nowadays and nowadays problem, or is it on the contrary something that was always missing or maybe underestimated uh, in the first work of the regulation school? So indeed my question is really that. This new approach 
of regulation sectorial and territorial, of meso-analysis. Is it because the world has changed or is it because it was underestimated in uh, previous form of the regulation school? And uh, if I wanted to be like um, a bit uh, polemic, I would say, is it um, like in some in social sciences, in French social sciences, especially in sociology, uh, we have a lot of writers coming nowadays saying that world has changed and like Bourdieu or Durkheim, they were not really wrong, but now it's absolutely false. So I, I think uh, to people like Lahir or Latour uh, saying this kind of stuff in a different way. And so is this this idea that the world has changed, but this seems a bit difficult to understand. Is everything can really change, especially with something with a, such a historical framework as a regulation theory and this idea of the importance of history. So do we have something really different now? Or is it simply that it was missing and then why do you insist on this uh, present situation and this uh, nowadays in you, you insisted on your presentation and also in the paper? And uh, last question is, uh, is the identification of a dominant sector uh, such as the current industry for the Fordism uh, still an important issue or should we focus more or even only on uh, meso-level analysis? And uh, in uh, the case we should only uh, focus on the meso-level analysis, how can we have a grasp on the world macroeconomic dimension? And if uh, uh, we uh, say that we have to um, identify a dominant sector, how we identify a dominant sector, and uh, what are um, the criteria to make a dominant sector, and how a sector become dominant, is it only internal, internal and mesodynamics that become stronger and go over into other sectors, or is it something uh, at the macro level we cannot grasp at the mesoeconomic level? Okay. So thank you very much. Okay, I try. Thank you. Um, so, um, begin by the end. Um, so, uh, <laughs> whoa. Uh, no, not by the end, by the first topic. So um, okay, you you read the paper, uh, you you listen. Um, it's okay. Um, I think um, you you could so um, it's okay. I'm a, I am agree with you. You are agree with me about the description of my paper. Um, one point about the functionalism. Uh, as I said during my first uh, presentation, uh, there is something very important to to uh, to to work about uh, between uh, determinism and functionalism. Uh, as we say, there is something like uh, semi-functionalism. Uh, we could also say semi-determinism. Uh, I think it's a discussion with uh, some uh, Marx Marxian point of view. Uh, there are strong determination, or maybe Bourdieuian determination. Uh, if you if you read uh, uh, Bourdieu, you uh, you can understood all the reproduction system. Uh, you know the reproduction. Uh, uh, if you if you read Bourdieu, is not the same reproduction if you if you read. Uh, um, uh, Boyer or Aglietta or Lipiet so and so on, but there is something like uh, the huge power of uh, institutional device which are integrated inside our minds, inside our uh, uh, organization, our uh, cognition and so on. And, uh, generally speaking, when we uh, present a regulation theory, uh, we uh, say uh, there is Marx. Okay, uh, it's very very important the nexus uh, struggle, uh, 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 which label nexus uh, first of them. Uh, there is Keynes uh, uncertainty, uh, uh, macrologic, uh, and so on. Uh, the historical point of view with the anal 
you to that. But there is also uh, Bourdieu. There is also Bourdieu, not, uh, not uh, as it, but uh, in the spirit of uh, all of the regulation uh, theorists uh, about the, the reproduction. So if you accept uh, the major role of uh, Bourdieu uh, in our uh, uh, theory, in our methodology, in our uh, perspective, you have uh, another point of view about determinism and determination. There is maybe a lot of determination, but not a strict determinism, because uh, our production, our uh, scientific production, uh, the proper uh, development or struggle of workers, social groups, transform all this uh, determinism or determination. And you see there is something like a dialectical uh, relation, and it's, I, I think you understand uh, quite, quite well uh, that, that point. So uh, not simply a, uh, a role, a function, but something like a function. Uh, uh, there is, every time there is some uh, form of empowerment uh, by, uh, by social group, by policies, by um, uh, big firms, uh, empowering uh, uh, devices, empowering sectors, empowering um, uh, territories, but uh, there is, in the same time, the, the own autonomy, the own uh, history of uh, the territory, the sector, as I say about uh, Third Italy, uh, for instance. Uh, not simply a, a role or macro role, but something like a role, exposed role. Uh, and as you say, uh, as you, uh, I don't know if it's a question or a critique, but uh, um, do the object regulated uh, exist before or not? Uh, as I present in the first uh, section of, uh, of the, the slides, uh, I say the we have to uh, have a, a reflection about the role of the researcher on his topic or his object, on how uh, in building his research, he creates his own categories. Uh, and I think there is not something like that in mainstream economics where categories are much more uh, structured, uh, maybe permanent, but I do not speak about mainstream, it's not my topic. Um, I think our role as social scientists is to build category, is to build a representation, maybe more representation than category. So, uh, to respond to your, uh, your, your question or your question, I don't, I don't remember, question. Um, uh, we cannot say the, the object do not exist and uh, the researcher creates them. It, it's a it's strong or maybe a, a bit stupid. There is something, there is a point, there is some problem, there is some, uh, some uh, signals. Uh, and you work, not just you or me, but uh, a community of researchers work on the topic. And in working in, the, uh, in that uh, topic or that problem or that uh, signal, uh, we create categories. First time for uh, our uh, researching groups or, or tracks or uh, current or theory. So we have a role uh, to, uh, to, to transform and to define uh, the realities. And I think um, one of the major aspects of uh, that question is our role as social scientists uh, with uh, social groups, with uh, worker if you want to go to work with worker, with trader if you want to work with trader, uh, not me, uh, with uh, uh, political uh, 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 economy, with uh, the Direction de la Prévention, NBER, uh, uh, World Bank, I don't know. You choose, uh, if, if you could choose. Uh, it is not uh, every time possible to choose uh, for you, uh, for who you, you are working for, but uh, I think you create some reality uh, to produce something. Not really as a normative point of view, um, 
uh, I think uh, for uh, most of the heterodoxies uh, and for uh, regulation theory, uh, 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 the normative point of view is uh, one of the aspects. We work to build something uh, uh, which can have uh, social uses. So we build category uh, about uh, ecological transformation uh, and we hope and we work for that uh, some uh, social group catch these ideas. So the problem, uh, a lot of, lot of kind of sort of uh, problem or situation exist. When you work on it, you build the element to, um, the, to, 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 to produce still is a fact. And so uh, are the regulation pre-exist a bit? Yes. Uh, if there are no thing, uh, there are no, no way to, to work. And after, we, we, you, 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 you work to, uh, to produce uh, still is a fact. Sometimes you produce still is a fact we, uh, which uh, produce a wrong or not really right representation of reality. So uh, you, you, you think the most important regulation is here because uh, yeah, there is this fact, these uh, struggles, and uh, you are not wrong, objectively wrong, but it's not useful, it's not have effect on the reality, uh, and so on. You know, I, I think it's very important to have the, the time to, uh, to, uh, to develop your reflection about your work your relation to realities and the production of still is fact of social representation. Uh, I think the major point of my, my response is on your question, but I, I will try to respond to the other point. Um, thank you for the brief description of uh, uh, telecommunication and education. Uh, uh, meso regulation because it's my topic, <laughs> and I, I haven't uh, presented uh, uh, them in the in the slides. Uh, okay, uh, uh, good. Um, one topic is about uh, there is no universal theory. So uh, uh, an important uh, question for some uh, Marxist uh, researcher. Uh, Regulation theory failed because regulation theory, we hope during the 70s that regulation theory uh, could produce a, a, a grand theory, a major theory uh, after uh, Marxian theory or uh, Keynesian theory. And there is a lot of um, uh, desire. Uh, I, but no. Uh, it's not. It's not the major theory. Uh, of course, if you see uh, all the all the um, panorama overview of the uh, economic thought, uh, regulation theory is not a major theory. Uh, but uh, for itself, uh, it's not uh, an universal theory which could expl explain everything every time with. Uh, um, to uh, two or three uh, uh, big concept, but but uh, there is something like a universal methodology. Uh, maybe uh, the the most problem for regulation theory is it's not a theory, and regulation is not a good word. So there is two problem in two words to define this uh, heterodoxy. It's quite important, but uh, um, regulation theory is much more approach. Uh, uh, in, uh, if, you, if you read uh, Bob Jessop, you see sometimes regulation theory, uh, sometimes regulation approach, uh, sometimes regulation school. Regulation school uh, should uh, work if uh, there are a review. Yes, there are a review. Uh, if there are uh, congress, yes, there are congress. But there is not really uh, a lot of people working with programs very strong. But there is something like a school in the 70s, 18. Now I don't use uh, the word, but if you want, you can. Uh, a theory, 
after. Uh, approach, approach is more wide, is more uh, fuzzy. Um, uh, it lets some place uh, to, uh, to varieties. Uh, it it, it could be the, the, the good word. Um, on theory, uh, it's more ambitious, so uh, we keep uh, we keep theory. Um, not universal theory per se, but something like uh, universal posture. I think it's a, the, the the main point for regulation theory. It's a posture. Uh, posture. Posture. A way of thinking. A way of being as a researcher. What am I? What I am seeing? How I am? Uh, I am working. Uh, how I am working with uh, social groups and uh, how, I'm, how I am working with uh, uh, the corpus of uh, economic thought. Uh, how I am working with the uh, the object of the field of the. Uh, it's a. French word, a uh, posture. Standpoint. Maybe a standpoint. Uh, a way of being, a way of thinking, uh, uh, an ethical, ethical point, uh, methodological point. I don't you understand? Vous êtes français aussi? Quand vous traduisez posture? Way of being, way of thinking. Uh, an ethical, an ethical uh, uh, habitus. <laughs> no, 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 habitus. No. Uh, okay, I don't know. I will work on uh, on that uh, on that uh, topic. So it is a, a universal uh, way of doing research in economics, uh, uh, linked to uh, methodology, to theory, to history, to other social science, to produce. Uh, representation to go to see as uh, as uh, Frédéric Lordon said in the conclusion of the his book of uh, night uh, 20 uh, 2008 um, institution et pouvoir dans le capitalisme something like that um, conflict pouvoir conflict conflict and power in the institution of capitalism um, he said, "You, il faut aller voir. You go to see what happened uh, in the in the trading uh, 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 factories. <laughs> Do <laughs> and, and so on. Aller voir. It's something like I uh, the, the the posture of the, the way of thinking. Uh, from that point, there is something uh, which could be." Universal and uh, humility of a researcher. Uh, if I go to uh, to see the the Buen Vivir, uh, the Buen Vivir uh, in uh, South uh, America, uh, I, I could be I could use uh, some of the elements in an abductive way. And, uh, if I work on the Buen, on the Buen Vivir, uh, maybe uh, accumulation regime uh, do not be, be very useful, but I have to build my own element. Uh, is that the major point? Uh, and it could be the major point for the, the, the last question, uh, the last question uh, about the, the missing. If you work on forism in France, in the US, it's something right, not quite simple, but uh, countries, the northern country, rich countries, uh, uh, with a uh, incredibly uh, important development of uh, of mass production. There is a major social fact. If you work on other topics, so there are missing elements. No, there are not per se missing elements. There are missing elements if you want to see something different from the, the in caps, uh, the macro regime. So um, to respond to, 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 the, to this question, I, I don't know exactly how, how to respond. I want to say maybe the two, maybe uh, neither one, neither the other. Um, 
the, the world have changed. Of course, the world have changed. Uh, I think the the main uh, the main concept uh, and the main um, posture, the main concept of regulation theory, uh, do not need to be uh, uh, renewed. But the uses of this concept should be renewed. What I want to say, I want to say, if you read uh, Robert Boyer or uh, uh, Michel Aglietta like the Holy Bible, you say, uh, ah, c'est uh, Robert Boyer. Uh, uh, and uh, and, and you, you, you cannot choose the concept because you, you, you use, you use, you use uh, the concept as a, um, uh, comment tu dis le naphtaline? Naphtaline? No, okay. Uh, like old concept, uh, we, we could not uh, be uh, used uh, with a lot of dust on them. No, the point is you have to use the concept and to go to the reality with the concept and to be humble, yes, but to uh, have some ambition with that concept. So it's not a, something like a missing point, but missing uses. Uh, of, uh, of that concept to see uh, uh, not big realities. Uh, macro is something like uh, the noble thing in the economic field. On meso, it's a very few topics for a little research. Uh, maybe it's my uh, my master <laughs> uh, It's my uh, my uh, my own uh, phantasm. Uh, but uh, you 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 could uh, use. Uh, that concept and methodology uh, to see uh, a lot of elements and to try to understand what are the forces we permit reproduction or we do not permit reproduction. In that way, it's quite universal means of, uh, of working as a uh, social researcher. You see? So we want to uh, renew uh, regulation theory with developing uh, meso-analyses, which are uh, more delimited, uh, 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 with a lot of varia variation or variation. And it's, our, it's our topic, it's a, a, a renew, uh, renewal. OK. Um, a point about uh, long-term policy. Um, I think there, there were a point about long-term policy. So, do we do we have a problem with long-term policy? No, we have a problem to policy because we are very outside of the power. We are not uh, talking to uh, the government or the uh, Economic Union or the Federal Reserve. Uh, oh, excuse me. Ah, Federal Reserve, yes. No, uh, not a way. Uh, so we could not deal directly with uh, that power because of the organization of the economic power, as you understand very well. But uh, I don't think there is a problem with long term. Uh, if you see uh, the works about um, the green transition, uh, about uh, so-called uh, functional economy, which is uh, a meaning to understand the uh, circular economy, uh, the introduction of uh, sustainable development to uh, build a new uh, servicial or industrial organization. There is uh, a view of the future. Uh, there is a topic to uh, uh, produce group with uh, industrial, politician, um, uh, researcher to build solution, uh, ecological solution, uh, social solution. And uh, some of our colleagues, which are uh, regulationists, as Christian Duterte, uh, for instance, are working in that uh, functional economy, uh, which could be uh, described as uh, the political economy at the meso scale. Uh, so the, our uh, interlocutors are not the same. They are uh, locally localized at the infranational uh, levels um, and so on. 
So I do not think s that's quite a, a problem. <laughs> I don't say it's easy, but um, not problem. Um, about um, the links among individuals and groups. Oh, so just just a point. Uh, uh, as you understand, um, I have a lot, m uh, a lot of slides, um, and in the in the third section, um, I want to work about time. But there is one point which uh, responds exactly to your um, uh, to your question. Uh, well, okay. Ah, zut, pardon. Euh the fabric of temporarily by individual behavior. The individual, neither a common economy, economicus nor homo sociologicus, dialectic between individual and collective times, the times for the individuals and for the collective, the institutional fabrics of individuals. Your point is here. How do the individuals are uh, fabrics, uh, structure? Uh, you can use Bourdieu if you want to use Bourdieu. You can use uh, uh, the construction of the categories used by the, by the, um, by the, um, the individuals. And another point, uh, I will uh, not uh, read everything, uh, but just. Uh, mm. Okay, you want me to stop? I stop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. A minute. Oh, I leave. I have another courses. I have another courses at uh, just after in a uh, master degree in Paris Seven. Uh, I'm so sorry. Very, very. Uh, sorry, just, just that point. The individual does not exist independently from the group and vice versa, interwind temporarily of structure action. I can give you uh, the slide if you want. Uh, in, in our presentation, uh, first presentation in June, there is three, three points. Uh, the status of regulation theory, the first, uh, the first section, the meso-analyse, and times in, and individuals. So your response are, are here. If you want to read them. J'ai répondu à tout? No? About this course, um, just about this course. Um, I, th I think uh, there is a, a, an attention to the discourse. Not really uh, huge thesis uh, on the discourse with uh, uh, lexicographical analysis, but uh, analysis of the discourse. The, um, uh, the work, um, the qualitative works, uh, we uh, found uh, meso analysis uh, are built with uh, sociological methods. Uh, so. Uh, uh, qualitative methods, uh, interview, uh, construction of the discourses, uh, interrail, you have a lot of uh, work about the discourses. Uh, uh, in the, not in the, in the main regulation theory, but uh, in the, the nebulous, in the, in the periphery, in the periphery, in the periphery? In the periphery. Uh, with a uh, uh, discussion with uh, sociological economy, uh, with uh, uh, political uh, sociology. There are, there are a lot of works about these courses. N maybe not in the, in the main corpse of, uh, of regulation theory, the first times of regulation theory. Sometimes we say uh, regulation theory one or regulation theory two, two, and now we are maybe in regulation theory three, but it's not quite important. The, now I think there are. Uh, Uses of that uh, methodology, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Maybe the dominant sector. Yes. Uh, 
It's an important question. It's an important question. Uh, what should be, what, or what could be your, uh, your field of research, my field of research? Uh, um, I think uh, uh, w one of the major, major results of regression theory uh, has been to uh, understand Fordism. And after, very difficult uh, to understand financial aid regime. Uh, a lot of researchers uh, work on it and uh, uh, a lot focus on uh, the regime. Uh, what I can say is during uh, part of the 80s, part of the 90s, part of uh, year two kilo, uh, a lot of people uh, spend a lot of time to, uh, to catch the dominant regime. Now, the dominant regime is uh, crashing down. Uh, if we want to know now uh, which uh, sector uh, will be the dominant sector for the 20 years, it will be very long. I am sure a lot of uh, you uh, will work on that. I just want to say, don't just want about the dominant regime, because during the transition, the Gramscian transition, there are a lot of uh, sectors, of territories, or uh, meso space, uh, which are important because they are um, resilient, uh, they are innovative, uh, innovation which could uh, go up or down. And my topic is, we are not to uh, focus only on the future major, big, dominant uh, sector, because we are not sure uh, uh, it will be one, just one sector. Uh, we, we, we want to work in the e-economics because uh, Uber or, uh, or not Uber is, that is the question, you know? Uh, donc, uh, uh, okay. so I'm not sure it's a good idea, but I'm sure we will do. Uber or not Uber is a question. Yes. Hi, uh, hello, my name is Anna. And in your presentation, uh, you showed about the meso-analysis from a territorial point of view and from a sector point of view. But uh, in reality, we, can, we, we know that uh, some territories are spe specialized in some sectors, like uh, some countries are specialized in commodities, other in high added value services. And also there's a, the point that the sectors in which they are specialized can influence uh, their economic development. So how does the meso-analysis, uh, my question is like the theory, the regulation theory, uh, are there theories, approaches that are willing to combine these two levels and how do they, do they see this interaction between sector and uh, territory? I wanted just to know more about this interaction. Thank you. I no? Absolutely, you're right. Uh, um, excellent question. Uh, in reality, uh, uh, I should not say there is a meso space which is sectorial, a meso space which is um, uh, territorial, a meso space which is professional. In the reality, you are right. And uh, the topic, when you go to see, the, the reality is what are the forces uh, which are uh, structurant, which are dominant. Uh, I, uh, I develop uh, just a bit the example of uh, 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 service to individuals. Uh, when Florence Galois works on this topic, uh, she has the idea of a regulation sector. Uh, sector. Why? Because there are strong uh, reform uh, of the service to individuals, and uh, the aims of the reforms, the political of the policy, uh, is to create 
big firm for that uh, new industry, new service industry for the future, uh, which uh, associated to uh, uh, old people uh, and so on. And what she, uh, she uh, described is the uh, sectorial regulation do not work and uh, the main devices are produced by territories. So you're right, there is uh, something like a, a cross order uh, with uh, sectorial devices and territorial devices. Her topic, Florence Galois topics, uh, point of view, is to say the territorial uh, devices are much more uh, structurant, dominant than the uh, sectorial devices. So, and it's uh, this nearly the same, uh, the same uh, thing for uh, the wine, uh, the wine sector. The wine sector, as you know, is more uh, ter uh, territorialized because there is some uh, appellation, very special, uh, the, the, earth, the soil, the sun, uh, and so on. So there is some uh, natural uh, uh, element. But there is a construction of the sector, uh, of the sector, uh, of, uh, according to the quality of the wine, uh, which is quite uh, hierarchical. Um, and there is a transformation of these uh, hierarchies, which linked th um, sectorial element, transformation of the nomenclature, yeah? um, and transformation of the, uh, the territorial relations. So you have, every time you have to, to cross the different elements, uh, and when you do that, uh, when you cross sectorial, territorial, maybe professional, uh, element, uh, you can describe the meso regulation. If you if you take the education, there is uh, elements which uh, where uh, uh, territory are relevant uh, about the national definition of higher education, for instance. But the um, sectorial transformation uh, worldwide produce new elements who affect. The, the meso regulation of uh, higher education with cross relation between uh, globalization of education, localiza localization of devices. It's always cross relation. Okay. Um, we don't have much time, but does someone else have it? I see one question, one more. Okay, so uh, it's not an epistemological question or theoretical question. It's related to what you said about uh, regulation economists not being able nowadays to work in big um, policy institutions. But you're saying it's still important to keep in touch with, I don't know if you use the word whatever, civil society or other social groups. And I know that you worked a bit on, on um, cooperatives. So can you tell us how you see your work as a researcher with cooperative and what do you do exactly? I think it can be an inspiration for, for, uh, for the audience. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, something li like very, um, um, come on I, I don't know if it's very specific or it's, uh, it, you can have some generalization, but uh, if you see the uh, trajectory of uh, Robert Boyer, Michel Aglietta and so on, uh, their, uh, their position are where and are uh, very strong uh, inside, uh, inside uh, the state's uh, uh, instrument uh, in the planning, uh, direction de la prévision, liberation of planning. Uh, uh, their academic uh, position uh, were very strong. Um, nowadays, uh, the strong position in France and uh, nearly all over the world are not very strong for uh, the heterodox, as you know. Um, and so, uh, indeed, you, you're right. Uh, we are a lot of the heterodox. Uh, some are working about uh, economic policy, uh, like uh, the economist Atere, uh, for instance. Uh, but some of them, uh, me, for, for instance, uh, I am working on meso regulation, uh, as you know, <laughs> as you understand, I hope. Um, and uh, you're right, I am working uh, with and about uh, cooperative movements, COPS, 
uh, which are uh, organization. Uh, a lot of them are small organization, and their object uh, is uh, an alternative mode of organization. Uh, and uh, their uh, aims is to develop uh, democratic relation inside the firm. Little firms, but inside firms. I think it's a new stage for democracy, uh, not uh, democracy in the, in the public uh, areas, but uh, democracy inside, uh, inside firms. So what am I doing as a researcher with the with the actors, with the enterprise, uh, is to work with them. Something like uh, action research, uh, as developed by uh, Henri Desroches. Um, action research is uh, uh, a way of thinking uh, our position of research with uh, civil movement, with uh, civil organization, with uh, al alternative modes of organization. So we, uh, we have built a, a, a cooperative, which name is uh, La Manufacture Cooperative, Cooperative Factory. Um, and the, the topic of, the, of, the, of this, uh, this cooperative, this, this, this uh, little, uh, little enterprise, is to uh, research, to produce instruments for actors in uh, cooperatives to uh, uh, transform their uh, Productive modes, uh, so po something like a political economy at the very uh, meso, micro meso, uh, micro meso levels, and to understand how we can uh, transform society um, with uh, the democrat democratization of firms. Uh, I can develop hours if you want, but uh, I'm not sure she is agree. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, it's my fault. Alors, I, I can continue about, uh, about uh, cooperatives because there are a lot of links with regulation theory because as you understand, uh, I'm, I'm really uh, built inside the regulation theory and regulation me regulationist methodology. And uh, when, I, uh, when I am working with um, social actors, uh, which are not regulations, <laughs> as you know, um, my topic is to, uh, to, uh, to catch where uh, there are regularities, uh, which are the device or the institutional arrangement which uh, works or not. Um, for instance, um, in the cooperative movements, there are one big rules is one person, uh, one, uh, one vote. And, uh, so it's, it's, it's a way to transform the, the industrial relation inside the, the, the company or the enterprise. Uh, it's a way to, uh, to, uh, to make a firm different from the, um, the firm's uh, uh, the, the shareholder or the company. Um, so nevertheless, uh, one person, one vote, uh, it's great, it's a democracy. But it, it, after saying that, after saying there, there is a formal device, the rule uh, of voting, the voting rule, uh, we have to, to go inside each companies, uh, micro, micro companies, to see uh, uh, how do they operate with that rules. What are the link? between formal rules, one person, one vote, and the reality, the concrete reproduction of uh, uh, the power, uh, the, uh, are the relation patriarchal or not patriarchal, uh, are the relation uh, very formal with uh, white male uh, dominant, and a lot of questions of, uh, of, uh, of that kind. So our topic is to, to catch the different reality of cooperatives, to uh, aggregate 
something like an aggregation to, to uh, produce devices to help actors to deliberate, to produce new rules or new uh, practical devices, uh, how to, uh, uh, to uh, organize uh, meetings uh, for uh, the real sharing of uh, uh, the discussion, and so on. Uh, and uh, nowadays, uh, we are contacted by um, other countries to help to uh, build uh, laws. Uh, uh, the actors in, uh, in Tunisia uh, are developing a new laws on cooperatives, uh, cooperatives for the development of agriculture and, um, and business. And uh, they, want, uh, they, want, uh, they want us to help them to uh, build a law, the, the legal uh, meanings of the law, and to, uh, to develop accompaniment uh, uh, to, to build uh, something like a consulting business. But it's not a, a consulting where we know, you don't know, and I tell you how to, to, uh, to deal. But it's something like a co-accompaniment and uh, production with researcher, with actor, with the co-production of our own tools. So uh, you, you ask me, uh, as a regularity exist before or not? If I uh, use the, uh, the example of cooperation, uh, sometimes a lot of reality exists, a lot of devices exist, but our topic is to uh, design the, the, the reality, the devices, the uh, institutional arrangement to uh, put words on them to develop it and to uh, develop it uh, at the national scale or maybe international scale. Uh, in October, we are uh, uh, Cuban colleagues uh, call, uh, call us to, uh, to work about cooperatives and so on. So, so there is uh, a movement, not a huge movement, quite alternative, relatively weak, but which transforms society uh, uh, by, the, um, by the civil societies. So we can be uh, empowered uh, on other topics than uh, macro, uh, macro policy. Uh, because, as you know, macro policy uh, are main topics, uh, and it's very difficult to uh, uh, transform the modality of action of uh, uh, European Union. But uh, Danny is much more uh, uh, competent than me to speak about that. Another point? <laughs>